Guys, in this video, we're going to look at some specific heat pass paper question examples. We're going to start with a multiple choice question. This is a multiple choice question from 2018, OCR Physics A, Modeling Physics, and question three in particular. Okay, so without any further ado, let's have a look. We've got a metal block of mass 0.28 kilograms. It has some sort of an initial temperature. Then we drop it into cold water, so it's going to be losing some of that thermal energy away. The temperature of the block after 1.2 minutes is 20 degrees C, and we have the specific heat capacity of the metal being 130 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. What is the average thermal power transferred away from the metal block? Okay, this will be a perfect time for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question independently. Perfect, I trust that all of you guys have done this. Now let's have a look at the solution. My first step will be to write down the equation for power uh, because that's what I'm looking for so we can just say that power is uh, energy divided by time like so our energy is going to be mc multiplied by our change in temperature delta theta divided by the time our mass is 0.28 kilograms, so we can write that as 0.28. We're given the specific heat capacity C in, um, in, in our SI units already, so no need of any conversion. So we can just write multiply by 130. Our change in temperature, if the block is going from 82 degrees to 20 degrees, is going to be 60 degrees. 2 degrees so 62 divided by the time now in this case that's 1.2 minutes so I'm just gonna be a little bit careful I'm gonna make sure that I convert that to seconds so the way we do that is we just write down 1.2 multiply by 60 and if we input those numbers into a scientific calculator the correct answer up to two significant figures is going to be 31 watts and we can see that this is this is answer A. So that's the correct answer in this case, A. Perfect, now let's have a look at a written question. In particular, this is a question from 2013, so it's a slightly older question. We've got a room which measures four and a half times four times 2.4 meters, and the air in the room is heated. We're given the change in temperature, we're given the density of the air, so we'll probably be able to work out the mass. And the first part is asking us for the thermal energy. Okay, now this will be the perfect time for you guys to pause this video and fully attempt those five marks. Okay, I'm sure that everyone here has paused the video and attempted those questions independently, just as you should have. Now, let's go for the solution. Okay, calculate the thermal energy required to raise the temperature of the air in the room. I'm just going to write on the side the equation for it. So, the equation is that the energy is equal to mc delta theta, where theta is my change in temperature. Now, I'm not given the mass, I can work that out from the density. I am given the specific heat capacity over here, and I am given the change in temperature. Okay, so in order to find the thermal energy, the first thing I would need to do is find my mass. Now, if I'm given the density, I'm just going to start off with the equation for, for density. So, you know, the density is mass over volume which means that mass is given by density times volume now if we plug in some numbers into this our density is 1.3 kilograms per meter so should we just write that down over here so it's going to be 1.3 multiplied by the dimensions of the room um, so that's going to be uh, 4.4 5 multiplied by 4.0 times 2.4 that's going to give us our mass in kilograms and the correct answer for that is 56.2 now 
remember I'm not really doing uh, any rounding at this stage, I'm not doing any, um, any rounding and uh, I'm going to just put the answer to the correct number of significant figures as the final step in my calculation. Okay, so now that I have the mass, I can plug this back into the equation which I wrote on the right hand side. So the um, energy will then be given by the mass which is 56.2 so 56.2 multiplied by the specific heat capacity which is 990 so times 990 and finally my change in temperature which is just 21 minus 12 degrees Perfect. And uh, if we were to plug this, uh, these numbers into our scientific calculator, up to two significant figures, I'm going to get an answer of 5.0 times 10 to the 5 joules. Perfect. Now um, we can see our mark distribution. In this case, if we're marking this uh, as an OCR examiner. Our first mark is going to go for finding the uh, mass of, of the air. So if you've done this, give yourself a mark. Um, if you have given the substitution mark, which is this one over here for the energy, give yourself another mark. So you have two out of three. And finally, if you've given the uh, correct answer, which is 5.0 times 10 to the 5, give yourself another mark. Perfect. Now the uh, next bit of the question is asking us to calculate the time required to raise the temperature of the room from 12 to, um, to 21 degrees. Okay, well in this case we are given the power so what I'm going to do is just write down my equation for power. really like this equation, so power is just energy over time. Now all I need to do then is just rearrange this equation for time. So let's do that. So time will be energy divided by power, which uh, I can now substitute my values directly. I've already uh, I've already found the energy in the question above, 5.0 times 10 to the 5, so I'm just going to input that back here. Okay, so let's do that, 5.0 times 10 to the 5, and divided by the power, which is 2.3 kilowatts. Now remember 2.3 stands for um, 2.3 times 10 to the 3. So let's just write that down. So it's going to be 2.3 times 10 to the 3 watts. And if we divide those two numbers, once again up to two significant figures, we're going to get 220 seconds. Perfect. So I'm going to make sure I put my answers on here. So it's going to be 220 seconds in this box and 5.0 times 10 to the in the box above. The mark distribution for this one is um, the substitution mark, which is this one over here, and the correct final answer. Okay guys, now let's have a look at the rest of the question. Once again, so let me just scroll down to it. This will be a perfect time just to pause this video and attempt the rest of the question. Okay, perfect. So, uh, moving on, what the next part, part II, is asking us to do is to calculate the mass of the heating gas. Now, this is not the mass of the air. We've already found this. This is the mass of the heating gas of the, um, of the, he of the heater. So, it says over here that each cubic meter of heating gas provides 39 megajoules of thermal energy. Well, hang on a minute, we're actually given that the total thermal energy here was 5.0 times 10 to the 5 joules. So if I divide this by 39 megajoules, I should be able to get the volume of the heating gas. 
Okay, so let's uh, just write this down. So um, let's divide this. So it's going to be 5.0 divided by 39 times 10 to the 6. Remember, um, mega stands for 10 to the power of 6. Oops, let's not forget times 10 to the 5 just above. So that's going to be the volume of my heating gas. Uh, if we just write that down on the side, so the volume of the, let's say, of the heating gas, like so. So it's 5.0 times 10 to the 5 divided by 39 times 10 to the 6. If we put that into a calculator, we're going to get 0. Uh, not one to eight cubic meters. Perfect. Uh, the answer kind of makes sense as well. It's not something terribly big. So, so far, so good. Um, we're already given the density of, uh, of this gas up here. So it's 0 0.72 kilograms per meter. So we can just directly calculate the mass uh, of our gas. So we can just say that mass is density times volume once again and uh, we can just input those numbers so our density is 0 0.72 and our volume as we calculated just up there is going to be 0 0.0128 if we put those two numbers into our trusted scientific calculator for our mass we're going to get 9.0 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. The mark spread for this question, as you can probably guess, there's a total of two marks available. One is going to go for finding the volume of the gas, so you can give yourself a tick if you've done this. Quite a lot of students nationwide did not actually get uh, this mark, so it was, it was a tricky one. And once uh, we had this, the second mark goes for calculating the mass. Okay, perfect. Now, very last bit suggests two reasons why the time required and the mass of the heating gas will in practice be greater than the values calculated in part B. Well, this question is all about thermal energy, which is being lost. Now, there's one thing, and I cannot stress this enough, is that exam boards do not really like uh, um, bold statements such as heat lost to the surroundings. Even though it's true, what we need to do is more specific. So we need to be a little bit more specific. So what I would, um, so I need to give two reasons for two marks for my first reason. I'm going to say that uh, thermal energy was lost. So let's just write this down. So thermal energy was lost. Um, let's say to the walls of the room could be the walls of a container or anything like that to the walls of the room. In practice uh, you could probably also write um, if there's a you know there, there could be um, windows or it could be lost through the floor or anything else and um, finally I also say that uh, there were probably some objects um, in the room so uh, probably uh, thermal energy was uh, lost to other objects uh, within the room so um, so thermal energy was lost to other objects so thermal energy was lost to other objects in the room just here on the side I'm going to write down a third uh, possible mark. Now uh, I'm going to write this in red as well because uh, this is just another option by doing by writing those two we've already um, gotten the, the full marks. However we could also have written that uh, some air may escape actually the room if you think about it this uh, room is, uh, is probably not perfectly sealed so that would mean that um, 
some mass of air may escape the room. So some mass of air may escape the room. You can, you can kind of think of this as a container which is just not perfectly sealed. Okay guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, past paper question video. If there are any questions, any questions on the question, feel free to drop 